All right, back again, Luke here. And today, what I thought we could do is a bit of an unboxing or unpackaging and repair video, since we haven't done one of those in a long time. As you can see here, I have a uh, letter here from the old post office, so I figured we could go ahead and cut this open and check some of that. As you can tell by the title already, this is a supposedly very destroyed game. And I thought it would be nice to see if we could bring this thing back to life. And here it is in all its glory. This is a super Famicom super mess. <laughs> Let's see just how bad this thing is in just a second. All right. Well, there we have it. Here is our uh, cover. Or as you can see, the front of it, Back to the Future 2. And uh, it has definitely seen better days, but as you can see down in the corners, this is a bit concerning. Uh, there is quite a bit of rust going on there, and there is rust inside the slot. So, I'm not sure if this thing was submerged or what, but uh, you can definitely see it has been lying in some kind of water. <laughs> All of the back is kind of... Uh, erased from there. You can't read really what that says at all, can you? But I figured we could go ahead and uh, see what this thing is like, see if we can bring it back to life. I don't know what, what we're going to see on the inside here, but uh, those screws don't look very promising. Let's see if we can even get a grip on him. Oh, wow. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty bad. I think I'm going to have to try and scrape away some of this just to see if I can get this get around. Get a, even get a little bit of a grip on these. Wow, those are just falling apart. You can see the steam, the smoke just kind of bellowing, bellowing off of these. Wow, it's just disintegrating. Like, look at that. I've never seen a, a screw like that on a Famicom cart or a Super Famicom cart just disintegrate. Oh my gosh! Look at that. Look at that there. All right, so that's what we're dealing with. Um, maybe, just maybe, I can get lucky and get a, a bit of a grip on it here if I apply some force. Oh, it's spinning. I don't know if it's spinning just on the top or not, but it is spinning. Hopefully it's coming out. Oh, it might be coming out. There we go. Okay. We have the, uh, the first screw. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Oh, man, that is bad. That is bad. It's extremely rusted through. Jeez. Not giving me a lot of hope here for uh, what's about to come. We'll take a look at the, the other one anyway. Same situation here. You can see the uh, the two-tone fading on the, the cart as well. But uh, yeah, this one, again, it's another disaster. All right. Are you guys ready for this? I'm not sure I am. Let's see how bad this is. Okay. <laughs> this thing has been, a... yeah, definitely in a swamp. Here's the back of it. So you guys can see the uh, the back of the board there. Let's flip it over. How bad is the front? Okay. It's surprisingly not as bad as what I thought it would be. Obviously, could the capacitor here is shot, and uh, you know there are some corroded points underneath the board, but it's not too bad. Um, I was expecting the all the traces to be lifted and uh, everything else be just an absolute mess, but yeah, I would say that's that's doable. So what we're gonna do is try and take this thing over to the sink, wash it up a little bit. I'm gonna use some. Probably simple green on this, although it's definitely simple orange as it is, like that rust color orange. But we're going to have to replace this capacitor here. This is a 6.3 volt 22, it looks like. 22 microfarad. Well, look at that. I don't think that's, well, it's not even attached. So, just... Yeah, I'm just going to take that off there. <laughs> we're going to have to do some soldering and stuff like that, but uh, that's what we're looking at here so far. Like I said, it's uh, much more presentable than what I had originally thought it would be. But since it's Back to the Future 2, I figured we could 
you know, try and get this thing going again. Definitely, you know, deserves to not be dumped into the uh, the trash pile. So let's go ahead and walk this over to the sink. I'll get some of the simple green and we'll get to scrubbing. So see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our simple green. We have our circuit board. We have our top and bottom piece here. What I think we're going to do, we don't want to get the label too wet because I know it's going to start to deteriorate even more than this. So we'll save that, put that off to the side. Normally with electronics here, um, even with regular circuit boards, simple green works really well. Uh, on uh, arcade PCBs and things like that. Let's see if we can get this thing to spray out here. Normally with simple green, you can let it sit for, I don't know, just a few minutes here. Uh, it does work really well if you add a little bit of water to it and let it sit for just a little bit. And it'll start to eat away at the corrosion that's on the board. There are a lot of traces under here that we won't be able to see, but judging by the uh, the board the way it is right now, I can definitely say that it doesn't look bad. It definitely doesn't look as bad as what the outside does. So, just using a regular toothbrush here to polish up the board. Like I said, we're just going to have to replace that capacitor. I'm really surprised that the pins here are not eaten away. That's uh, an A-plus there. And some on the back here. Obviously, we're going to have to let this thoroughly dry before we decide to plug it in, but this looks like a really simple fix. <laughs> it's kind of hoping that it would be a bit more dramatic for you, but uh, yeah, unfortunately I think it's just going to be the uh, replacement of a capacitor and a bit of some cleaning that's going to do the job for this one, which is awesome. I almost half wanted the uh, security ROM to be eaten away. That would have made it a bit more entertaining, I suppose, but I suppose there is a bit of some tarnished uh, legs going on here. Not much, not much at all. That already looks a million times better there. Go ahead and rinse this off. <clears throat> not bad, not bad at all. One more time, I'm just going to hit it with the simple green to get up underneath the uh, ROM here. I'm going to run it through one more time, but... I think we're definitely going to have a winner here. As long as that sh that capacitor wasn't shorted and somebody didn't plug it in with a shorted capacitor, which is always a possibility, I think we're going to see some hope in this game. But if somebody did plug that in with the shorted capacitor and uh, there was the uh, magic smoke that we couldn't see, then we're going to be in a whole different uh, situation. <laughs> Yeah, this piece of cake. We'll go ahead and we're going to let this thing dry off, but maybe before we do that, I'm going to use my solder sucker and uh, just a pair of tweezers or so and remove these legs. Try and find a uh, another, what is that, hair? Jeez, there's hair in there. Ugh, how does that, jeez, how does that get, oh my gosh, how did that get stuck in there? <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I'm going to go and get those uh, things cleaned up here, get this one to clean up a bit too. I don't think it really matters with the back part. I could technically just save the uh, save myself the trouble and just get another back from another game, put that on there, but it kind of defeats the purpose of trying to repair something versus replace it. So we're going to keep this thing all original. It's just going to look like it did when it uh, came out of the pond or wherever it was. <laughs> Minus all of the grime and grunge, or at least a little bit less of it. I know that back sticker here, keeping it in water, is just going to be hurting it even more, but yeah, I mean, we're pretty much past the point where you could read any of the uh, text on the bottom of it, so I think we're safe at saying that that's not a big problem right now. <laughs> You can see how much stuff is just coming off of this. This is just ridiculous. That sink was clean. 
so. Good times. Hopefully you're enjoying a bit of uh, washing. This ASMR kind of uh, washing of uh, Famicom. Super Famicom game. <laughs> like I said, we'll, we'll try and polish it up. Maybe I have some extra screws. I don't think I want to use the same rusty screws on this, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks a bit better. It's, there's no way I'm going to get that off. That's, that's pretty much embedded in there, but uh, yeah, there's that one. And then the other half. Let's see what we can do with this one. I'm going to use some regular kitchen soap for this part. And we're going to go over the label just a little bit. Unfortunately, it's going to get wet, especially with the exposed parts. But um, uh, hopefully it'll dry out and that'll be okay. Like I said, I don't want to leave this on there for too long because I know that's going to really dissolve the front part. You can already see that it, uh, it is getting wet there. But it should dry out. It's crazy looking at that there. But uh, yeah, we're going to leave it here, and I'm going to try and see if I can do some magic with the rest of this, make it a little bit better. But uh, we'll see you guys back on the table for some capacitor repair in just a few minutes. So, see you in a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead here and see if we can uh, remove the legs off the bottom of this broken capacitor. There's a little bit of rust on the bottom here, but shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully it'll come right off. We will see here. I don't know what the best aim of attack is for this one, but maybe we can grab the top part with our tweezers. And maybe go ahead and see if we can get the bottom here to loosen up a little bit. Oh, it seemed like it moved. Let's go ahead and... At least bend these back a little bit, I suppose. Oh, this one kind of broke a, a bit. It's just twisting. There we go. There's some bits kind of breaking off there. Get the other side a little bit up. Okay, maybe that'll make it a little easier. Let's see if we can add a bit more solder to this. I don't know if this is going to accept much, but we'll try it. The one side should be alright, but go ahead and grab the other side. Grab this pin from this side. Hopefully it'll pop out like butter. Almost. It's almost there. Maybe we can get this one first. It's a bit tricky with uh, just one hand to... There we go. There's one. The old camera. And a more corroded one. This one doesn't seem to be ready to pop right out, but... Oh, there we go. Come on. Come on up. We're almost there. Come on. This one has been a bit more stubborn. There's really nothing left for it to be hanging on there. There we go. Alright. So we've got uh, these points here. Let's see if we can add a bit more solder to those. Maybe we can find our solder sucker around here. Or maybe not. Looks like uh, I'll have to go and find the old solder sucker. It must have left it uh, somewhere else. Oh, there it is. Okay, I've got it. Let's try this. Let's see if we can. Move these ones just a little bit. There's one. And one more. Okay, nice. Let's go ahead and get our rubbing alcohol. Clean these pads up. So 
take that. Clean up this side as well. I didn't have the same size uh, capacitor, the original one, uh, as you can see here. This one is pretty shot. There's the bottom of it. So, didn't have the exact same one, but I did have a 35 volt, 22 microfarad, little bit larger size. So, we're going to go ahead and use this one instead. It should work exactly the same. There will be absolutely no trouble with it as long as the rest of the board works. So we'll just go ahead and clip these ends off here. We'll slide them through. Just check our positive and negative terminals on here. You can see it's clearly marked positive and negative. Just slide this in, we'll bend it back a little bit. Go ahead and flip it over. Our solder down here. Move it around. One, two. Go back here. One. And that should be good to go. There we go. We're going to clean that off as well. But that guy is in place, so it's already looking a lot better than what it originally did, as you can see here. Woohoo! So, lots of promising uh, stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and try and clean this board up a little bit more, and we'll slap it back together and see if this thing works. So, I'll be back here in a bit. Okay, so I was able to sort a couple of screws here that we can use for the case. And uh, I tried to polish this up the best that I could, but as you can see, yeah, it's still, I mean, <laughs> it's missing. The label's missing there, but uh, we've got our board here. So we're going to pop this in here and uh, reattach some of that and see how this works. Put this inside. Uh, like so. I tried to clean out the uh, insides the best I could with um, some cotton swabs, which really got quite nasty. Um, these are like what they look like with the rust on the inside. So they managed to take out some of the rust, but uh, yeah, there's still quite a bit remaining. Let's go ahead and uh, put these screws in here. And the label is still a bit wet, but uh, that's okay. It will dry. That's a lot nicer there. Pop in this other one here. So far, so good. All right. And uh, even though the label is still wet, the rest of the PCB is still, um, it's completely dry. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the lights here. We'll pop this into the, uh, into the old system. We've got our Super Famicom here. First test time. Hopefully this thing works out. All right, so moment of truth. Let's give it some power. And that looks like it's working. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, I would say that that is fixed. <laughs> this is awesome. All right, we've got our intro there and uh, has it got music? Yes, it does. This is awesome. So, we do have a game back from the grave. Not much work needed to be done to it, but just enough to keep it from working. You can see there's a little bit of a line down the center. I believe that's from the S-Video cable. But another classic uh, game here, Saved from the Grave, which is awesome. Well, let's just start it up, see how it goes. Hopefully the game will start up. Yeah, and it does. Well, there you go. Not much work to, to do it, but... This is great. It's a lot better than the uh, Barn Tendo, <laughs> but it does have a bit more rust, so. There we go, round one. Looks like everything's working out all right. We'll just try and move around a little bit and see if that works, but.
yeah, we've got another classic game here that should be able to provide more entertainment just a little bit longer. But uh, nevertheless, if you guys stuck on this long, then fantastic. Just want to share with you a bit of a look at this repair on Super Back to the Future 2 for the old Super Famicom. And it's working like a champ. That's super awesome. Always cool to see these old games here, you know, just continue to work. I know there there is a finite amount of time left on these boards, but yeah, if they can just stay working just a little bit longer, that can help preserve the uh, the magic of these, these classic games. But uh, yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching. Watching some Marty McFly action here on the fly. <laughs>